I have that, so. It looks sweet. You can see how clean that is right there. You're on? All right, Maniacs. Thanks for coming back for part three, hopefully. Final part of the turbo install on this car. So, turbo piping, boom, in stock. Custom welded by our very own Cameron. This is gonna go on, replacing the radiator while we have an opportunity, because the old one had a crack in it. And we're gonna run all the rest of the lines. So... some pretty large orders this past week for the car. I ordered a whole bunch of shoebox stuff from Shoebox Central. We got a whole complete grill, headlight bezels, mirrors, one new door handle or used door handle, all the window rubber, some other miscellaneous pieces from them. And then also had a chance to finally put the order in for the status racing seats. So put that order in, got steering wheel through them, harnesses, five point harnesses, went with black harnesses, pretty stoked. I think it's gonna be cool. This is actually getting pretty exciting finally. We're actually physically mounting the turbo for the first time. I think we got the height pretty, pretty sweet for the hood. We're kind of hoping that the hood's gonna kind of go right around here. So leave this on the outside. So Cameron got the exhaust inlet, I guess, all welded up. So now we can start focusing on the on the charge pipes going down to the intercooler. We might have to brace it. We're thinking we might brace it off of this here. Do we wanna, I'm not sure yet. Oh, you mean yeah, that part right there? I don't know where it's at. You're gonna have to turn the V-band that you were just tightening, probably clockwise, just a, a hair. Like, that's pretty good right there, dude. Go ahead and snug it. So we have a couple of options. Visually, we can line this turbo up, the axis on it, straight with the car, in line with the car. Or, do we take into consideration this fender line right here, hood line? So I think we're gonna wanna go like kind of split that. So we're not gonna go perfectly straight with the car. We're not gonna go parallel to this line here. We're gonna kind of split it about halfway in between. I think visually when the hood is on, if we're straight with the car, the turbo's gonna look like it's cocked to the right, you know, even though it won't be. So I think you gotta play with, you gotta play with the visuals a little bit. So like right here is kind of straight with the car. So it's correct, but if you put the hood on and you're looking at it, it's going to look like it's this way a little bit. So I think we got to figure out that sweet spot of like where something like this is going to be. So we're going to have to drop like an imaginary line out, you know? Well, I don't want to go too much because then it's way too... Then, then you're going to be standing over here. You're going to know where it's actually from the side. You're going to see the next turn. So it's like either right now. this way a little bit more actually yeah you know what i mean this might actually be in line with the car right now yeah so it's a little bit definitely you know going this way though so we're still good on all that so why don't you snug it right there let's, let's work with that turbo guards oh. nope yeah it's not the right size that is cool looking though yep turbo card makes some cool ones need to go way bigger but that's gonna be sweet though all right, so it. yeah, so I guess this is not gonna fit, so we're gonna return it. Send it back. Oh, dude, who got wheelbarrow grease on this thing? Sorry, man. Is this wheelbarrow? Dude, it's donut jelly. So while we were at it in the front area here, we went ahead and replaced the uh, old radiator. Had a little bit of a stress crack, and we were worried that you know we're gonna have problems with it later, so we didn't want to deal with that later. So we ordered a replacement radiator. And we discovered while we're working on the front right here, this is a fitting 
that mounts up to the head. It's a thermostat bypass line. And this was broken. And it was just literally barely sitting in there. So that was a good find. And we ended up connecting with ECS Tuning. Got their billet version of that inlet fitting there. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on. And we ordered the replacement radiator through them as well. We're gonna have some uh, nice fresh stuff in here. Let's keep working on the turbo. What are you waiting for? Um, okay. Oh man, I'm sorry. So, in order for the water cooling to, to be properly done, according to Garrett, the turbo body has to be at somewhere around 20 degrees of an angle. So that's the main housing, which is this middle part. We can still independently move this charge side and turn it, and actually this back side as well. So this is actually three pieces, and you can move them independently. And so the center piece is what we're trying to get lined up properly now to be in that 20 degree range and we're deciding which way because the water cooling goes in and out and there is either side could be in or out it's just that the lower side needs when once the body's turned the lower side needs to be the in so we're trying to decide if this is going to be the low side or it's going to go this way but i think we're going to go clockwise that way our oil this is oil cooling line this is the oil inlet it's not oil Oil. This is our oil feed line. <laughs> there we go. Right here. And if we're gonna turn this 20 degrees this way, then that'll actually help us with the angle of this thing a little bit better. It will work in our favor instead of going up higher. What's taking you so long, dude? So on the X5, I put the lower springs in, I don't know, a month ago. And I didn't like how it was running out of travel on the front with two inch springs. So I ended up buying these, uh, these Bil Bilstein B8s. Really nice shocks, right? And they're supposed to be a little shorter too. I'm getting really good at taking that car apart. <laughs> I ended up taking the passenger side off and I put it all back together. There was this plastic piece on the strut that looked like it was just came in shipping. So you have to take that off to put the cup on it for the spring, right? So I put the cup on, put it all together. You know where I'm going with this. Put it all together on the passenger side, go to the driver's side, and I'm looking at that piece and I'm like, man, I bet you this piece needs to go back on after the cup goes on, because that's what the bump stop hits okay. instead of hitting the O-ring on the top, you know? Okay. I'm like, dang it, I'm gonna take it apart. So I finish the driver's side, put it all back together. I go back to the passenger side, and I'm taking the bottom bolt out, which is the first one that you get to. No way. Seized up. <laughs> so I end up forcing it off. It comes off, comes apart, I have to cut it. And so, but like, you know, completely destroyed the bolt and the nut, you know, so it wasn't gonna get done that night, you know. Yeah. It would have been like a two hour job. It would have been really nice. So I went ahead and ordered Two, two bolts, just in case yeah. at that point, you know? And uh, I went ahead and put the bolt, the new bolts in two days later, went to the driver's side to replace it too. It gnarled that one up as I was trying to take it out too. Really? So so I guess you get like three tries. This is actually two good ones, get third one and you're done. We ran into that on Connor's Golf, on his last car, before the GTI. You know, we were taking apart the, the subframe and the bolt seized into the subframe. Fortunately, that car comes with a three-piece subframe, so we were able to order just the outer piece of the subframe. Unfortunately, we did one side, and it didn't take care of the booking problem that we thought, so we moved to the other side. It literally duplicated the same problem on the other side, so we have to replace the other half. And in the process, I almost knocked myself out, of course. That right there, I got real lucky, dude, because it just, like, it was the, the top of the spindle. Yeah. And it wasn't even, like, spring-loaded or anything. It was just its own weight just sitting there. And I moved on it and it went BAM! Mm. And it just clipped me, dude. It's super sharp. And I was like, dude, if I was like a quarter inch further forward, it would have broke my nose. But now I got this little shiner over here cruising around for a while. So I think, you know, cut it around here, cut it right at the half point, use this piece, or a little shorter, drop it over, turn back down. 
beyond that. Oh,